Hi, I'm Professor Derek Moot, Professor of Plant Science at Lincoln University. I'm going to give you some hints on how to write a literature review. Literature reviews are pretty important when we're dealing with scientific data. Scientists communicate by writing peer-reviewed papers, and often you're sent to read these papers and try and distill the information from them into a coherent and logical literature review. This might be at the upper 300 level paper, in an honours dissertation, or um, in a master's course. It's important that you can do this, you can do it efficiently, and you can do it effectively. So I'm going to give you some guidelines on how to do that. The first thing you're going to need is a title. So make sure that title is short and informative. In this case, um, you want to mention your main topic area. For example, problems and solutions for establishing pastures in Southland. I can see that I'm going to talk about the problems and the solutions, and I've got an area that I'm going to talk about, establishing pastures in Southland. I might also do something like, does grazing preference of sheep decrease the clover content of pastures, and write a review on that. So a short and informative um, title, rather than simply uh, Plant Science 611 or a review. Let's understand what it is that we're talking about. In your introduction to that review, you need to background the work. So think of an upside down funnel, uh, think of a funnel, sorry, and, and, and the, the broadest part is at the top, and that's where we start our introduction. In this case, I'm going to give you an example for hay and silage for an introductory paragraph. The broad statement is that feed conservation is a vital part of the New Zealand pastoral system. So that's quite a broad sweeping statement, and it is a statement, and that's why I put an S at the end of it here. S being quite important, statement. That's how we can start a paragraph. Gives us a way of starting a paragraph if we're ever stuck. How do I write this? Make a statement. Then offer an explanation. Surplus pasture is conserved as hay or silage in the spring to be used when feed deficits occur in summer and winter. So now I've explained why feed conservation is a vital part of the New Zealand pastoral system. And I could also give an example of that. So Smith reported, and then I've got a quantified example, and that's my X here. Statement, explanation, example. Sitting in the library and you can't think about how to write statement, explanation, example is where you go. In the second paragraph of this introduction, I might talk about the distribution of production and why things differ. For example, in the Waikato in New Zealand is wet, so my statement would be that we tend to make silage in the Waikato, whereas um, because, because it's never dry. So we make silage because it's always wet and we never get hay dry. And then I'd give a reference to that information. Following down through that um, introduction, which might only be three, four, five paragraphs, the third paragraph could indicate what sort of species can be used to make into hay or silage and the fact that we can grow specialist crops for hay and silage. How we measure quality might follow in the next paragraph. And then I could finish that off by saying how we use the silage will also have an impact on whether we make hay or we make silage. Do I want to use the hay and silage for maintenance or do I want to use it for production? Am I maintaining sheep in a dry summer or am I trying to milk dairy cows or goats off, um, off the feed? That could, make, that could influence whether I make hay or I make silage. So that would be sort of five paragraphs. And I would include some of the key references that I'm going to use later. Three or four of those is all I need. At this stage, I might have a total of 12 to 15 references in my literature review, but three or four of the key ones will be mentioned in this introductory period. At the end, in the last paragraph, I need to state the objectives and what I'll cover in the body of the review. What are the main topic areas I'm going to cover, and which areas might I not cover? In the main body, I need to use headings and subheadings to introduce topic areas. You can number these if you want to. And you can write again, statement, explanation, example. Your example now may refer to a table or a figure. It's important that you extract information from the papers that you've read, the tables and the figures, to include in your literature review. Make sure that you grab important tables um, and you either retype them or you produce a high quality reproduction of them and include them in your literature review. You need to write about them, therefore they need to be included. You might make statement explanation example more than once, have two or three paragraphs on a particular topic to deal with the issues of that topic. You might also find differences in what authors found. So highlighting those differences and trying to come up with an explanation for why they might have come up with different results is part of the critical component, critical comment component of a literature review. 
They may have been working in different areas um, geographically. They may have used different measurement methods. So they may have come to different conclusions, and it's your job in the critical component, critical comment component of your literature review to highlight these things. Let's have a look at a table. And for those of you doing a dissertation or a thesis, it's important that we think about that, how we actually include and use tables. We want them in our literature review. So for example here, I've made a statement. Largely white clover cultivars are suited to dairy grazing. My explanation is that they partition a higher proportion of dry matter to leaves and stolons. This means there'll be elevated leaves in the canopy and the, the dairy cows have access to them. And then my example could be a comparison of cultivars that I've got in Table 1. And I illustrate Table 1 with a title. And again, I have the measurement and then the classification. So what is the thing that's been measured starts the title. So dry matter production, grazing preference, whatever it is and then how it's classified. In this case, dry matter production is classified by white clover cultivars. So what we've measured is the first part of the table title, or indeed, it could be the figure caption. And then how it's classified. In this case, these are the white clover cultivars. Aaron, Hillier, and Tahora are white clover cultivars. And where it's come from, it's come from Jones 2005. A quick point to note here in the data, we've got three significant figures. That's three non-zero figures, 10.2, 25.1, 29.4. And then our standard error when we're doing scientific writing should have one more decimal place than our main point here. So 29.4, got 1.62. So I've got two decimal places here versus one decimal place here. So three significant figures and one more decimal place on the standard error than I have on my main measurement variable. In the text, I need to extract the numbers that I require. So I may actually pull out 25.1 and use that number in the text. And then I would continue to explain or interpret the statement um, that I've made. The statement that I made was that uh, largely white clovers, let's have a look at that statement, largely white clovers are suited to dairy grazing. And I'm explaining that by showing that they have more leaf. So I might say, for example, the large leaf Aaron partitioned 33 grams of dry matter to its leaves compared with only 8.34 for the small leaf Tahora. And then I'm illustrating that point that largely white clovers are suitable for dairy grazing. In figures, I have the same thing. I, figures are visual aids. We summarize data with them, and they show relationships. And you need to extract the figures from whatever you've been reading and put it into your literature review. They must have a caption below them. And you need to select the parts of a figure or a table that you need. You might have a table in a, in a paper that's 20, 20 lines of text. You only need eight of them to um, highlight your point. Extract the eight that you need. Don't change anything. Don't just choose the best eight. Um, choose the eight that you need and make the table yourself. With a figure, it's harder often to make the figure, so you might want to reproduce it some way, scanning it or, or including it in your literature review. But tables and figures quantify data. And that's really what we want in a literature review. You must quantify statements. And to show the marker that you understand, you need to walk the reader through at least one example. So here, I would walk the reader through and show, rather than just making the reader find their way through Table 1, I can show you that 33 grams of dry matter for the large leaf Aaron was um, produced in leaf versus only 8.34 in Tahora. The numbers that I have here, I would extract and write into a sentence in the text. General comments for a literature review. All statements should be referenced with examples. Your opinion is actually not that important in a literature review. It's your job to state the evidence. Produce the evidence, state it, logically present it, and then you can come to some conclusions at the end. So all statements should be referenced. And the first time you use a reference, um, then it should be there in full. And once you've used that reference, it's assumed as you write the next paragraph or two that you are still referring to that reference or that table. You don't have to write table one after every sentence. If you're still referring to the same table, that's okay. When you change to a different table or you're quoting work from a different reference, then you quote that reference. Don't use words like better. What does it actually mean? Don't use good. Don't use as you know, clearly, as discussed above, very... These are not very helpful words. And make sure you quantify things. E.g. 20% higher, not just higher. Quantify, quantify, quantify. In literature and science, we are expecting there to be quantified explanations of things, not qualitative. Qualitative simply says 
that things are different. Quantitative says, how big is that difference and is it real? In the conclusion section, you might have two or three paragraphs in your review, um, four or five um, bullet points if you want. But in here, you should be um, extending to think about what areas of knowledge do we need more information on? What things were controversial? What do we need to look at from that context? Just because it's in the literature doesn't mean it's right. So part of your learning process is saying, I don't quite think that review is right. I think those people came to a false conclusion because they did their work in the summer when it was incredibly dry, or they did it in a region where it's completely different from somewhere else. So it's, it, it, the literature may be right, but it may not always be right, and it's your job to think about that. Unless, of course, I wrote it, in which case you're going to be, have to be very um, clear about why what I might have written is wrong. Trying to write in the active voice is important for a literature review. Um, rather than writing the results in Table 1 show, try and write Table 1 shows, giant or Figure 1 shows. And again, Figure 1 shows response of Y to X, and Y is that measured variable followed by the classification variable. Jones reported. The other key thing about a literature review is we write in the past tense. We use was and were, not, is and are. The results of one experiment are not conclusive. They do not create a fact. Facts can be written in the present tense. White clover is a legume. That is correct. But we use the past tense whenever we're referring to scientific results. Um, you'll need a summary. That summary actually goes at the beginning of your literature review. In a scientific paper, that will be an abstract, but it's an abstract of the data that's in the paper. Here you're writing a summary. You need to have one, four or five paragraphs, half a page, something like that. Write it last. Summarise your main points. The first sentence summar summarise your introduction, then outline the main topic, and have two or three paragraphs of your main findings. Quantify it, and come to one paragraph of conclusions, state what you found from that literature review in that last paragraph of your summary. So that gives us a flow for how we're working through a literature review. References need to be are important. Use EndNote if you're not sure. Use the Journal of New Zealand Grasslands Association um, style if you're not sure of how to, to do this. But getting references right, that means um, both in the text and at the end, is very important in a literature review. People need to be able to go and find the, the literature that you're quoting. All authors should be quoted the first time a paper is mentioned, up until about three or four authors. Once you get beyond three or four authors, you might decide just to use et al. So moot et al means moot and others. And it's written in this form, et al with a full stop, because the al is actually an abbreviation of ALII. -I. So the full stop indicates abbreviation, et al, and other for three or more. And then an example of how you would include references in the text. Smith 2006A comes before 2006B, but Smith comes before Smiley. The, the other thing about a literature review is that it must be logical and it must come to a logical conclusion. So make sure that you go back and look at the marking schedule. Here we've got the example for Plant Science 321, and I'm suggesting that you go back and look at, and it differs, the literature review marking schedule differs for each topic. In this case, um, the students get marks for their title, for having a summary, and they're told here to make it less than 200 words, an introduction, the body of the review, and most emphasis is placed on the body of the review, critical comment, and some conclusions. So it will depend on who you're doing the literature review for as to how these marks are divided up. But in general, all of these sections need to be covered in your literature review. The references are important, um, both the body and how you write them. And these are easy marks to get. Make sure you get them. Presentation is important. Grammar, past tense, spelling, proofread. These things are important and they're part of the learning process of creating a literature review. I wish you well in your endeavours to create a literature review for Plant Science 611. We have one literature review due at the end of the term. For Plant Science 610, you're going to be writing several literature reviews. For Agri 393, literature reviews are important. This is going to be your first of many. Good luck.